Hi, everybody. I'm Bobby Fai. We're going to be talking quickly through the Wednesday slate. We're going to talk through each game real quick. It's a first look, so keep that in mind. I'll be live at 6 Eastern. Hopefully, Sheets will be able to join me today, and uh, we'll get after it. So with that said, please like and subscribe, all that stuff. If you're not in the Discord, please make sure to be. Um, and uh, yeah, let's move on, and uh, let's get into each game, because I think it's a it's a big slate with a lot going on. It's been, as I've mentioned, it's it's been a rough stretch for me. I've had some really nice plays laid in there, and I just keep, like, getting the wrong dud and not adjusting my lineups to the optimal situations, getting guys injured, some luck, some just not playing as well, I feel like. So trying to turn it around. So let's, let's get into it. Starting with Charlotte at Washington. I think on this slate, like, I don't think anybody is, like, a, a must play. I think, I think like, you could always make that argument for LaMelo in a good matchup, right? So I'm fine with that. Um, I also think that you can certainly make an argument for uh, like weird value prayer shots like Mark Williams. Um, doesn't seem like the right slate to me, but I always think you can take a shot there, especially when they're on the road, increases the blood stuff. But they just don't really give him over 20 minutes very often. So not overly excited about that. On the Washington side, it's going to come down to whether Bradley Beal and Kuzma play. And it's just without them, it's, it's almost impossible to try to analyze this. As of right now, projecting them to play, but wouldn't be surprised. We've seen one of them sit or both sit at times. There's also a lot going on with the trade deadline. So keep an eye out for that. These are very, very volatile slates. I just want to remind everybody of that. You're going to have guys who are scratched late. You're going to have them. This is the day before the trade deadline. So don't be surprised if some of the, if some weird shit happens. Fortunately, these are the first games but this is, these are teams who people are looking at trading with. So let's see what happens with Beal and, and Kuzma. Other than that, as of right now, not interested in anybody particularly. But that, without Beal and Kuzma, it's a different story, especially against Charlotte. And um, I think you can make an, uh, uh, an argument for a lot of these guys. So let's 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 wait to see till six on that one. On the uh, Detroit side, fortunately, one team we don't usually have to to worry about. There's not a whole lot of question to Q tags. They every now and then will sit somebody, but they don't they don't Q tag everybody like like a lot of these teams do. Um, Jaden Ivey looks like he's at a very reasonable price in a tough matchup. I don't mind it. I don't love it. So that would be my favorite of the plays. Um, and I, I mean, like you can always make an argument for Duran again, tough matchup, but. Uh, not nobody standing out as like a priority play here. I do think Jaden Ivey and Duran would be my two favorites if I had to pick two, uh, but probably going to be off assuming that everybody's in. On the Cleveland side, you have Mitchell and Carlin, both questionable. Obviously, those, those are both really big pieces of information. All things considered, like assuming that they, they both play, I think that you're interested in the bigs, both Mobley and Allen, in a good, really good matchup. Um, and I think that both are are like – early look like kind of almost cash game ish viable. I feel like they, they're, they're very comfortable for me both to, to play each of them, give a little bit of the edge to uh, Mobley myself, but I really like both the bigs regardless of whether Mitchell and Rubio play. And I think if Mitchell and Rubio, I'm sorry, Mitchell and Garland, if Mitchell and Garland don't play, we're going to be talking about trying to find a way to probably get at least like four Cleveland pieces or three Cleveland pieces, but we're going to have to revisit that one at six. Fortunately, we should know before, uh, before uh, lineups lock. Moving on to Philadelphia, Boston, uh, you know, sort of the, the the main competitive game of the night. Both teams really, really in there. It's it's hard to make an argument uh, here for anybody uh, just from a point per dollar perspective. Nobody stands out. I do think that Joel Embiid is really interesting here because because the ownership will stay so low, and they can't just sort of like they can't just you know soak everybody into the paint and then dare out the other guys to beat them because you have Harden, Maxi and melted out there. So I, I actually think that MB could end up being a, a really sneaky, good spend up tonight. Um, and early on, he's just getting absolutely no ownership. Obviously MB has a Q tag as well. I'm assuming he'll play. If he doesn't, we will reassess that also at six Eastern. Um, that's what these first looks become this time of year, guys. Sorry about that. Um, you got Boston. who looks like everybody's going to be good to go and in a competitive, in, comp in a competitive game. Probably just keeps me off them. What I would say is that Horford has had good games against this Philly team. And I actually think Horford is probably a better play than he's uh, going to be owned at. So if Horford stays sub 10%, I'm definitely interested in getting some Horford. And I never have a problem with Robert Williams. I just don't want to do it in this particular matchup. San Antonio at Toronto. Um Zach Collins, you know, the, the minutes sort of come and go. Uh, I think you could you could always, it seems like every slate, you could make an argument for Collins or for Podal. 
it's up to me. I probably am not going to end up playing either of them. I think I would lean Podol going back to Toronto as an actual sneaky play, though. Um, so, you know, just 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 keep an eye on that one. Uh, the minutes, again, a little bit in flux, always some blowout risk. But Podol's had some good games that I, I always dig a little revenge narrative. And uh, Podol's minutes seem to go up and down. You know, you don't know if he's playing 20 or 32. And uh, if he's playing 32 minutes, I always like him. So 6,100 is a very reasonable price. I just think as of right now, probably not making anybody on San Antonio a priority. Only the bigs uh, stand out as being reasonable. Chris Boucher, always a nervous, a nerve-wracking guy to play uh, at ownership with, with ownership. Also always a nerve-wracking fade because he has that monster upside that we only see every now and then, but it, it's it's there. Um, I like Boucher a lot tonight, uh, especially when you factor in the potential blowout and everything and him getting run with the second unit. So I actually think that Boucher is a really, really solid play, um, pretty much regardless of what anything else that happens on this slate. I think that he's going to be stand out as being an interesting play no matter what. Um, Gary Trent, Precious, all those, those guys I'm, I'm fine with. It's a good matchup for every one of these guys, but do we really want to spend up for all these guys against <clears> – <throat> San Antonio tonight. It's a great, like I said, great matchup, probably a blowouty game. Um, and and the prices, they bumped up Van Vliet, they bumped up Scotty Barnes a little bit. The only one who hasn't is, is Siakam, who hasn't really been big, had big games in a while. I do think you could consider Siakam tonight. Um, but again, it's going to come down to what other stuff we have because none of these guys really stand out as being great plays, yet they're in a really good matchup. So if you just hope San Antonio keeps it close enough, maybe Siakam would be the would be the guy I would. I guess he'd be the guy I'd spend up for if I was picking one guy from Toronto tonight. Indy and Miami, um, tough situation here because you've got Nemhard with the with the huge projection. Um, not really overly sold that this is a great play. Um, I, in my early cores, he's probably going to be right in there because one, you get a little bit, you know, the game starts a little bit later. It's not on the first wave of games, so you get to see a few more starting lineups, which is important on slates like this. But I don't see him as that much better of a play than Neesmith. I will put him in there right now because right now he's the best point projection, point per dollar projection on the slate. But it, it still feels like a little bit of a reach to me. Um, again, the, the, the core plays are, are going to be done when I when I do them in the morning and I try to update them right before we go live. The problem is that a lot of it happens while we're live. So I will update you on what I'm changing about that while we go. But as of right now, I do think Nemhart is a strong play. I like uh, I like Matherin a lot for tournaments. I think that he's an interesting play as well. So that would be the, the the two that I have the most interested in. I just don't like the matchup. I like it better for Miami. And Miami with everybody playing is you know hard hard for me to to have a huge amount of interest in, even though it's a great matchup. I I do think that you know you got a great projection on Gabe Vincent. We'll see who ends up starting and how that works out. I like the idea of playing Struss. Um, not again a weird guy to play at ownership because you're so shooting dependent. But a 3,900, that's very reasonable. Uh, everybody, this is what I'm saying. Everybody looks like a good play. Hero looks like a really good play. His projection, I'm not sure if I'm buying that early projection. I think Jimmy Butler is a really good play. And I think Bam is in a good spot. So if I had to rank them, I think I would go Butler, Hero on the spend-ups, then Bam. And then I think if, of the value, I think I would go Struss, then Vincent. Um, probably not playing any high Smith. But you, you probably are going to end up with somebody from Miami just because the matchup is premium and you don't have Kyle Lowry tonight, um, um, amongst others. So you kind of want to get something here. But uh, if you think the game stays really competitive, Butler's the guy. If not, I think that Hero could shoot himself into a big game. But I, I like the idea. I like Stress and Vincent. want to play one of those guys. Right now I'm leaning Stress, but I have no problem if anybody wants to argue for Vincent instead. Um it's again, Miami looks all great, but I, I don't think I want to play like four guys for Miami tonight. I think I want to try to keep it to one or two. All right. On the Sacramento at Houston, I feel like these guys are playing every day. <laughs> um, and, 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 you know, we haven't really gotten maybe the, the, the dream games we've, we've wanted out of some of these situations and everybody's gotten kind of priced to a reasonable, reasonable level. Um, we have seen Sabonis have a couple of really good games against this Houston team. I have, I'm not going to fault you for doing it. Uh, not going to be a priority for me at the first at first look, but I think that he's fine, and I think that Fox is fine. Um, everybody rates to me to look just about fine. Uh, it's such a good matchup that you could argue for just saying f the prices and f the projections. We could get some. We could get a nice little stack in here, and and I think that's actually very reasonable. Um, Malik Monk is a sneaky play off the bench. Might make some sense. Herder's been losing minutes to him uh, occasionally. 
And uh, on the Houston side, you have guys like Tate who are going to show up as, as early value and who I actually think is, is, is reasonable value. I think Jabari Smith is going to put up a bunch of forties uh, probably more starting the second half of the year. I think he needs a little bit of a break, but uh, I do like Jabari Smith and Jalen green here, Jalen green, probably being the, the best of the plays with, uh, with green back saying Shingun hasn't quite been the same guy um, that we saw when he was just putting up crazy games. He could do it again. And this is a matchup where I think he could do it. But for right now, I think Deshaun Tate, Jabari Smith, Jalen Green are my three favorites and not really getting to anybody else. Although, yeah, I think that's probably pretty much it for me. Uh, always suffer for Tari Eason. Just wish there was another guy out or two. All right, Minnesota and Utah. And this is, I think this is going to be a really interesting, the, the game we want to get after. So you have Minnesota going back to Utah. I sort of thought Gobert would sit on the front end of the back-to-back -back with the groin issues. I don't know what to do here because Kyle Anderson did sit and he came out of the game before that with the back spasms. If, if those nagging things are, are happening, I, I just, it's hard for me to play guys like that who I, I don't know that they can stay out there. The same time, we don't know what's going to happen. Like, you know, they started Nas Reed last night. He picked up two quick fouls. So that kind of killed a lot of his love. Um, and uh, Edwards was great, but they got smoked. So it kind of killed him. D'Angelo Russell, one of the worst players who plays significant minutes in the NBA. Um, I actually think this is a good matchup and a good spot for him. He was just so awful. Well, he was in the court last night. I think he was like minus 27 or something. He was literally like the like the re, the big part of the reason why they got they got just destroyed. Um, but we're gonna have to wait on those news. I mean, even McLaughlin makes a little bit of a difference because the extra minutes, and you could say without McLaughlin, even guys like Noel might show up, especially if Anderson and or Gobert is out. You'd think Gobert would play back in Utah, but maybe not. Like, it's a back-to-back -back with the groin injury. So it's really a lot of speculation, and that's the way these slates are this time of year. It's just a little tricky to have a, a decided play uh, this early in the day. And uh, as of right now, I'm sort of off of Minnesota. I probably will be heavily on them later, and I probably will speculate that Kyle Anderson sits again, maybe take another shot at Terrain Prince, um, even though he wasn't good yesterday. Uh, obviously, if Gobert's out, we want to play Nas Reed or Nathan Knight. I think Nas Reed is obviously the priority. Nathan Knight is just a, another one that could get there on the uh, with the 3K salary. Um, and Luca Garza with the monster game last night in, in garbage time, but that's all it was, is garbage time. Kelly O, um, I'm okay with. I, I, I early look, he stands out as, a, as being a good value. I like him starting. I, again, it's been a while since we've had the big Kelly O explosion games um and and the ownership is sort of follows him around and he just sort of is constantly in that same 20 range 24 range whatever early on i'm gonna have to tag him but i don't know if this is something that i'm gonna be okay with by the end of the day my guess is i probably won't be um but as of right now i do think he's interesting and i'm just going to keep pointing out that walker kessler is a, a fantasy explosion waiting to happen all the time uh, that game against Dallas, he could have gone even much bigger. Uh, so I, I always like Walker Kessler as a guy who's continually under projected. And he, again, you don't make him a core play, but I do think that Walker Kessler is definitely going to be in my mix by the end of the day. Problem with Utah, as we know, they play so many bodies, but if we get anybody out and if we get, if we get Vanderbilt out again, especially, then it makes a limit, it solidifies a limit. Um, and then you can, if, if you get anybody out on the Minnesota side, we might want to have even more activity in this game. Uh, for what it's worth, Anthony Edwards, I, I probably leaned the, lost over it too fast. He was going to go nuts the other night, and he's been really, really, really good. Um, and the 9,900 is not a price that I think is unreasonable with the way things have been going for Minnesota. Golden State, Portland, this should be a fun one. Um, well, right off the bat, uh, Jordan Poole is clearly one of the top plays on the slate. I think he's obviously pretty I think he's like good chalk uh, especially in this matchup I also like Wiggins here um, I don't think Wiggins you know again hasn't looked quite as good this season as we've seen him in in the past uh, was playing really well the other night uh, you know against OKC not, not like nothing crazy uh, again it's not my favorite thing in the world always to do this but I, I do like him enough I also think Kaminga's in play at no ownership and Kaminga is going to have, you know, a wide range of outcomes on his game logs and stuff, but he does have a, he does have a high enough ceiling to where I would consider him. And then Clay's price being bumped up is going to make him unowned. And as we all know, Clay can shoot himself into, you know, a 50 plus fantasy point game pretty easily. He just did it the other night 
he was unbelievable the other night. Though. I mean, he made 12 threes. He was 12 for 16 from three. And he still only put a 51, which kind of is like, oh, if, if I have a guy who makes 12 out of 16 threes, I think I'd like to get that, like to have that 75, like, like a little or somebody would. So that's the one thing that turns you off. Even Draymond's in play, though, here. This is a really good game environment, and I think you're going to want exposure to it. Um, again, I, I, you know, Lillard is not going to project amazing. Uh, people might be finally like coming off of him a little bit because he finally had a little bit of a down game, but still been unbelievable averaging 36 real life points over the last month and, uh, not going to argue with it. I'm just not personally prioritizing it. And then everybody else looks like a, a very reasonable play. I think Josh Hart is probably one of my favorites, um, and I think that, you know, the, the price, and remember, I always say this without Nurkic, that Josh Hart's rebound rate goes up like crazy. Look at him, the, you know, so with Nurkic out, you know, 9, 12, and 8 the last three games. And when, you, when you're getting that many rebounds, you're just, you're just basically like so close to a double-double, you, you, you boost it up a little bit for the mat, matchup. And all of a sudden that, you know, that Josh Hart number, you know, instead of scoring 30 fantasy points, he could be closer to 40. So I think he's interesting. Um I still like the idea of playing one of Eubanks or Watford. Um, it's not the most exciting thing. It hasn't worked out. They've been splitting the minutes a little bit more than we'd like. Uh, Watford getting a little bit less of the run the last couple of games. Uh, before that, he was getting a little bit more. Right now, I, I, I don't know if I can make either of them fully a priority in good conscience, but I think that the idea of playing one of them, and I give the slight edge to Eubanks. Um, but I, I again, no problem with Watford. Uh, this is this could this could end up being an interesting game. Um, so I, I, I like the game environment. I'm willing to, to take some chances, but you see that what it is on this slate is there's not a lot of obvious core plays right off the at, the, at first look. Um, Kyrie's questionable tonight. If he's out, I think we have to do the the same thing we did last time: the Jaden Hardy, Josh Green, uh, potentially even Christian Wood type of thing. With Kyrie in, I don't think I'm going to pay a whole lot of attention to this one. Um, I, I don't know that he'll play, though. Like, I mean, this is this is still – it's early in the morning. We're going to figure this out later. But as of right now, um, no no real interest in the Dallas side for me against the Clippers uh, with the way things are currently constructed. If Kyrie's out, every single thing changes, and I will be all over the Dallas guys that I like, which would mostly be Hardy and uh, – I guess it would be Hardy and Josh Green. Uh, Josh Green looked really good the other night, by the way. Really impressed. Um, I think Marcus Morris is being a little bit over projected on the first look. Uh, I, I like Marcus Morris, and, and it's funny, he's had some huge games against Dallas in the past. Uh, the minutes are a little bit more in flux, maybe, than people realize. I know he played 36 and 32 in a couple games. He also had the 17 minute game, the nine minute game. Uh, look, it's fine. I'm not going to put Marcus play Marcus Morris probably at 25% ownership unless I get some more guys out. Um, he's okay. I have him as a, as a reasonable, reasonable play um, with no Kawhi. I'm sorry. sorry with, with Kawhi though, like, and, and Paul George just feels like maybe you're asking for a little bit too much. Both Kawhi and Paul George, I think are fine, but probably not going to prioritize either of them. Uh, they might have more revenge, revenge on their minds because Luca's, I mean, even though they, they beat them in, a, in the playoff series, the, 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 Luca drove them nuts. And uh, he actually made Paul George and, and Leonard look really bad. That was a couple of years ago though. Um, so as of right now, not all that interested in the Clippers. So going through it, you can see, I don't have like a huge number of core plays at first. Look, I'm going to update my cores before I end up posting on our, uh, site for good, but it is an all over the place slate where I think we're going to end up with guys like seven X value, eight X value by the end of the night. And right now we just don't have it. So it's a little bit of a wait and see, which is sort of what the slates are this time of year. So I'll see you guys live at 6 Eastern. Hopefully Sheets will be there and hopefully we can make some money tonight. Good luck, everybody. Congratulations to LeBron for breaking the scoring record. I wasn't there. I had a bunch of friends who were uh, good for them. Anyway, good luck to everyone tonight. We'll see you at 6 Eastern.